Heavenly Father, I do thank you for today. I do thank you for the opportunity to be here in, in assembly and just with like believers that we don't have to be concerned about what we talk about, what might come through the door, or being wrong for us, Lord. Hey, James. Uh, Exodus 32. So James can get to where we're at here. Um, <laughs> this is how dumb I am. I wrote 15 to 14. Yeah. That's smart. <laughs> it's actually 15 to 24. So that's awesome. <clears throat> And Moses turned and went down from the mount. And the two tables of the testimony were in his hand. The tables were written on both their sides. On the one side and on the, and on the other were they written. And the tables were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God, graven upon the tables. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said unto Moses, There is a noise of war in the camp. And he said, It is not the voice of them that shout for mastery, neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome. But the noise of them that sing do I hear. And it came to pass, as soon as he came nigh unto the camp, that he saw the calf and the dancing, and Moses' anger waxed hot, and he cast the tables out of his hand, and brake them beneath the mount. And he took the calf which they had made, and burned it in the fire, and ground it to powder, and strawed it upon the water, and made the children of Israel drink of it. And Moses said unto Aaron, What did this people unto thee, that thou hast brought so great a sin upon them? And Aaron said, Let not the anger of my Lord wax hot. Thou knowest the people, that they were set on mischief. For they said unto me, Make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. And I said unto them, Whosoever hath any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it me. Then I cast it into the fire, and there came out this calf. Um, <clears throat> yeah. It, it doesn't just happen. Um, so, Ken's not here. I don't know who's going to upload this, but we'll see in a minute where the title comes in. I don't normally title things, but it is Go Back Up the Mountain. Um, in Exodus 34. <clears throat> Hopefully I have this one written down correctly. 
um, verses 1 through 9. And the Lord said unto Moses, Hew thee two tables of stone like unto the first, and I will write upon these tables the words that were in the first tables which thou breakest. I know Brother Bert says this a lot. I know Brother Dave says it. The originals really don't matter. <laughs> the original originals that we started with, the Ten Commandments, aren't even the originals that they kept. So obviously what we have can and is the inspired word of God. Verse 2. And be ready in the morning, and come up in the morning unto Mount Sinai, and present thyself there to me in the top of the mount. And no man shall come up with thee, neither let any man be seen throughout all the mount, neither let the flocks nor herds feed before that mount. And he hewed two tables of stone like unto the first, and Moses rose up early in the morning, and went up unto Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him, and took in his hand the two tables of stone. And the Lord descended in the cloud, and stood with him there, and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him, and proclaimed, this, this verse struck me, because I realized this week that's a, that the next few verses is actually the Lord speaking, not Moses. I always kind of miss that fact. Um, so for me, this was encouraging. Everybody else is probably caught on to that a long time ago. <laughs> um, verse 6, And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and sin and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. And Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshiped. And he said, If now I have found grace in thy sight, O Lord, let my Lord, I pray thee, go among us, for it is a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for thine inheritance. Um, so obviously between chapter 32 and 34, he goes back up the mountain after wrongdoing. I know I fail a lot. I'm pretty sure we all probably do. In our walk with the Lord. Um, that's life. That's the flesh. It's going to happen. Turn around. Get angry. Moses got angry. Dealt with it. Went back up the mountain to correct it. This is supposed to be encouraging. I hope it is. Um, it is funny going to work at a new job. Being around saved individuals is a new thing for me. But having two guys that are saved is encouraging. Yeah. And then you have one of them be Paul, who is probably one of the most encouraging people I probably have ever met, honestly. Just makes it that much better. And Matt is just like him. They're, they're very similar, and it's, it's incredible, honestly. And it's a huge blessing for me. Um, it's helped my walk quite a bit. It's helped my attitude more than anything. Um, because I, I can very easily, when I'm around the wrong people, have the wrong attitude and want to just smash everybody. So it helps in a lot of ways. Um, so Romans 7. And start in verse 11. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just and good. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin, that it might appear sin, worketh death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, 
that do I not? But what I hate, that I do. If then I do, if then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the, serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. <clears throat> I know a lot of people go to this to kind of not justify necessarily, but you can get in that mindset of, oh, it's, it's just the way I am. It's, it's just, it, it's sin that dwelleth in me. Well, we have the Spirit of God if we're right. saved. Yep. There's no need. There's no excuse, even. Um, there's the convicting part. <laughs> um, if we yield to the Spirit, we don't have to go through that whole warring of the flesh. Um, you know, it's kind of... I'm just glad I made it through reading that, really. Um, actually doing it now could prove more difficult than actually reading it. Um, let's go over to Galatians chapter 5. <clears throat> but again, this is all falling into the same thought of we're going to fall, we're going to fail, um, we're going to have problems with the flesh. Yes. Seek the Lord, reconcile, straighten it out, start climbing, start walking back up the mountain. Yeah, good. If not, my mom always said, and it always kind of annoyed me, <laughs> Just start. If you want to get something done, just start. It seems really simple, but and kind of trivial, but it's true. Just start. Whatever it is, she would always reference to work. You know, just start. If you don't know where to start, just start doing something. If all else fails, start sweeping a floor. I mean, on the job site, pretty much a floor always needs to be swept. So if you're not sure where to start, start sweeping, start organizing. Get your thoughts clear enough to actually start. Um, that's Sonia Benoit. We all know her. I think we all know her. No, Steve might not. That's all right. Someday. Uh, Galatians chapter 5. In verse 16 and 17. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth, lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. It, again, we've already stated, walk after the Spirit, and it's going to be a lot easier to deal with the flesh. Second Corinthians chapter five. And verse seventeen. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given, us, given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, 
not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are, all, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you, in Christ's stead, be, re be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Um, not sure. <coughs> right, new creature, old things, passed away, yeah. All right. Uh, there's always something. Um, it's the pulpit vortex that takes everybody down. <laughs> it does. It's a whirlpool. It's Leviathan. <laughs> Just. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. I appreciate you. Um, we, we have a new creature after salvation. Um, again, that ties into just following after right things, following after, after Christ, using Christ's example. Uh, it shouldn't be as hard as it is exactly. to avoid the flesh. We all know it is, but if we're following Christ's example and doing just the simple things that he asks us, we should be able to do it. One, one day at a time, one step at a time. Just, I know we say it a lot, I'm not trying to copy anybody, but it's not sinless, it's sinless. Can you figure it out for 30 seconds? And then another 30 seconds. I can't manage a minute, that's why I say 30 seconds. <laughs> People, especially on the highway, it might be less. But, yeah. but that comes back to if I weren't trying to do 85, people probably wouldn't piss me off so much. I mean, <laughs> so take your pick, I guess. Um, but you don't have to give in to the old man. Um, but it's easy you know much how the much study is the weariness of flesh or probably not correctly quoted but it's a lot easier to just mm -hmm. do wrong to be honest it's when that flesh gets in the way it's easy uh, it's harder to do right even, even if we didn't have the Bible in general, you look out in the world and people are doing wrong so much because it's easier. You know, I don't necessarily understand it because I think it's a lot easier to stay out of trouble than to deal with trouble. <laughs> Personally, everybody wants to drive 100 miles an hour, they get pulled over and because it's easy to go 100 miles an hour than it is to go 65 but is it really easier dealing with the cop when they pull you over or is it easier to just go 65 and get where you're going traffic comes up a lot with me <laughs> driving I should say not traffic um, let's go over to Proverbs 24 I do hope that this can be encouraging. I know for me personally, like I said, the way the messages have come together in the last few weeks, it's, it's been very apparent to me that I need to, I just need to start. I need to turn around and start heading back up, doing things a different way, the right way. Uh, mostly mentally more than physically, I guess. Um, but just being consistent out on the street, being consistent in witness. Again, that's one thing that's the boldness that Matt and Paul have because they're just not afraid of being wrong. They're not afraid of being judged. And I'm still, 
yeah. sitting in the corner. I, it's, it's convicting, but at the same time encouraging. Um, it's weird. <laughs> like I said, it's, to be in a, a work environment where there's other saved people, and there's even other, Justin is there as well. We don't get to hang out much because he's second shift. But knowing that, and there's other people in the hospital that are saved as well all throughout. And knowing that there's that many saved people around is, you don't feel as alone. You don't feel as, as weighed down trying to find a, if you're purposing to even find a time to talk to people. Um, uh, it's, it's weird. So Proverbs 24, verse 15. <clears throat> Lay not wait, O wicked man, against the dwelling to, of the righteous. Spoil not his resting place. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. But the wicked shall fall in, into mischief. Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth. Lest the Lord see it, and it displease him, and he turn away his wrath from him. Fret not thyself because of evil men, neither be thou envious at the wicked. For there shall be no reward to the evil man, the candle of the wicked shall be put out. My son, fear thou the Lord and the king, and meddle not with them that are given to change. For their calamity shall rise suddenly, and who knoweth the ruin of them both? Uh, read past where I needed to, but it sounded good. Um, again, we are going to fall. Stand back up. We have, as we heard from Paul, the strength of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is in us. Stand back up. It's like drowning in four inches of water. Just stand up. <laughs> you just turn over. You don't have to stand up. Just turn over. I mean, I, I don't know why my brain works that way, but that's what we do. We sit here and we say, I'm drowning, I'm drowning, I'm drowning. This is too much. This is too much. This is too much. Just turn over. Get your head out of the pillow. Stop suffocating. Turn over. Stand up. Start walking. It, it's, it is that simple. Yes. It really is, and we, we complicate it. But in verse 17, Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth. I do it. I'm not going to point the finger at anybody else, but I do it. Somebody that's lost, fails, starts going downhill, just does something that we think they deserve. I mean, put themselves, let's say people put themselves in financial trouble. Well, that's what you get for buying a car you can't afford. Mm -hmm. well, that, that comment's not necessary. <laughs> I say it, I do it. You know, I see somebody, you know, when you see a brother in Christ or sister in Christ start falling, it's disheartening. Um, but if it's somebody you don't like, you'd be surprised what you'd think about it. Um, but it's a, that's, that's in verse 18. That's the Lord's deal. That's it. He's the one that, that deals with that. Because it, the way I see it is, Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, and let, thy, let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth lest the Lord see it and displease him, and he turn away his wrath from him. Maybe if we didn't have those thoughts, the Lord would deal with that person. Mm -hmm. that, that's how I read it. If that's inaccurate, feel free to correct me, but when I start acting that way towards lost or saved people that fall, maybe the Lord's not going to deal with them as a result. For a saved person, for another saved person, that's to their detriment because of a simple response from us. You see somebody, whether you like them or not, if they're saved, you see them fall, we ought to be able to go encourage them. We ought to be able to go help them stand up, start walking. Um, 
spent a little more time there than I thought I would, but that's okay. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. The fingers are working today, so that's, that's good. Usually that's a struggle. Chapter 4, 2 Corinthians 4. And verse number 7. But we have this treasure, an earthen vessel, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about... Where am I going? Verse 12. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. Um, as far as verse 12 goes, the death of Christ is, is what worketh in us. We have his salvation. So the second half of that verse is, but life in, well, second, third. Second, third, wow. But life in you, the death of Christ should push us to give the life of salvation to others. Um, just a thought on that. But we have this list of situations where we're troubled, uh, we're perplexed, persecuted, we're cast down. The world is going gonna, is gonna to beat us down. The flesh isn't going to help us any. I know Paul has mentioned at work, there's guys that try to get him riled up, try to get him spooled up to fall. That does happen, it will happen. We need to purpose to continue our walk to have the right spirit to deal with that. Um, and we can. It's not, again, none of this is hard. It's all repetitive. But if you just lean on the Lord, lean on <coughs> well-doing, you, you can get through it. You can deal with the people that want to mess with you. Uh, soft answer turneth away wrath. Uh, I get worked up. There's not much softness there. Personally, uh, I'm sure other people struggle with it as well. It's just one of those things. People, I give Haley a lot of credit getting spit in the face. <laughs> that was a great look. Getting spit in the face out on the street and not punching somebody right in the mouth. I'm not sure I could do it. I. Somebody's going to get hurt in that situation um, with me. So I do. I give her a lot of credit because that's, that's not an easy thing to do when you're, I'll say, I don't want to say assaulted because it's, I don't want to sound like a wimp, but, you know, that's just gross. And to not act on it wouldn't happen for me, but that soft answer turneth away wrath. You, if you don't respond to it, I know the following verse, I don't know where it is, so I can't even turn to it right now, but I believe the following verse <clears throat> talks about how it's just a, it gets under their skin when you don't respond. You know, so that's, if there's any consolation to not react, it's, it's gonna bother them more that you didn't react than, it, than if you did. Um, Hebrews chapter 12 <clears throat> glad we cut the hole in the pulpit it's, you need the foothold 
Good things happen when you listen to me talk. I, you know, I try. <laughs> try listening. Listening's hard when <laughs> you think you know better. <laughs> Hebrews 12. We're going to look at verses 1 through 11. And this, these verses are actually a good example of Paul's encouragement because I walked in one morning and said, Paul, what's, what's, what's the verse that says whatever? He, oh, I, I, I don't know. Let me, go, let me go get my Bible. So he went down and he got his Bible and he looked it up. And it's really cool. Again, it's weird for me. But that encouragement of helping one another makes a big difference in how easy it is to walk with the Lord. Verse chap chapter 12, verse 1. <clears throat> Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed, are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Didn't even see this till just now. We lose the battle in our head before we do anything physically. Anyway, ye have not rested unto blood, striving against sin. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily, for they verily in a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, after, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Um, you fall, you fail, you make a mistake, you, you're gonna get whipped. Probably not as bad as we deserve, but you're going to get some chastisement, whether it's conviction from preaching, uh, just your own study, seeing verses that guide and direct. Uh, yeah, you all took it from your dad, more than likely. Mm -hmm. And I think most of us would say, at this point in our lives, if we're adults working, you're glad. You're glad at how you turned out because you can look back and realize it was growth. It was correction, it was growth, it was guidance, direction in life of how to get through life. But when we fail spiritually, we get chastised and, well, I can't believe God would make me need to do this or I, why, why did this happen because of whatever. Well, he did something dumb. You got to get corrected. I probably told the story before. Mom, mom had the tarred button on the hat. She, I did something stupid. She'd hit the top of my head right on the button of the hat. I said, "Quit being a tarred." So it's a tarred button. That spot's dead now. <laughs> there's, there's not much feeling there anymore. But. It's a silly way to be corrected, but it worked, honestly. People still try to hit me there, and it doesn't work. But, you know, how many times do you just do something so foolish, so simple, and 
not to be blasphemous, but God just hits the tard button. Just that simple question comes to mind. What are you doing? Yeah. Quit being an idiot. Mm -hmm. It happens for me a lot just because of one word that comes to mind. What are you doing? This isn't starting to sound very helpful or encouraging, but because I, I know me. Like I said, for me, the last few weeks have been really good because I know where I'm at in all this. And if Brother Dave says, if I'm doing it, you're doing it. So I'm not alone. If I am, you can tell me. That, that's fine. I'll be, I'll be alone. If everybody else is doing that good, I am happy for you. Galatians 6. You know, I'd, far be it from me to tear somebody else down spiritually because one thing I'm doing, one comment. I mean, you don't know what one sentence, how it might affect somebody spiritually. You, you don't know what's going on. Here, if we can't encourage each other here, we're, we're doing something wrong. We're all relatively like-minded here. It should be easy. Galatians 6, 7 through 10. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall reap of the Spirit, shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men. That's difficult. Yeah. Especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Again, Paul and Matt, it's very helpful at work. We ought to be able to have that same help. We ought to be able to call each other when you need help. I know all the the folks that are married here, you have your spouse. Have them help your spouse, number one, to be in good, a good walk with the Lord. But you can walk up that mountain together. You can encourage one another. It shouldn't be this a stupid statement from people. If you're not fighting, you're not, you're not fighting for each other. You don't love each other. You're not doing it right. It's kind of dumb. Uh, we're at odds with each other, yet we're fighting for each other. I don't see that, but okay. And people think that if you're a couple and you're not fighting, something's wrong. I know Jen and I get, <laughs> get joked about a lot on that regard, but we started dating in 2015, so it's been nine years. We've had disagreements. It goes without saying, but we've not yelled at each other. We've not freaked out on one another. If I can't just calmly talk to my wife about what's going on, what, what else am I gonna do to other people? If I'm freaking out on her every every other day because we're just at odds, my spirit towards others is gonna be way off. It's been nine years, we've not had a, I say we've not had a fight, we've had disagreements and discussions to find a solution. But we don't yell at each other. People can believe that or they cannot believe that, I really don't care, that's the truth. Um, if I can treat my wife right, I can treat others right. That love, the love that I have for her here in the worldly sense, but also with the help of the Spirit of the Lord, can transfer to others. It's not easy. <laughs> she makes it easier for me anyway than everybody else does. But there's a little marriage counseling on top of everything. <laughs> James chapter 5. 
the actual point of that those verses was supposed to be um, to sow the new man. Um, that new creature and old creature, new man and old man. Sow the new man. Sow the spirit of Christ. And that's what you'll get back. Um, at the end of the verses, again, with helping one another in the assembly, my... I pretty much answer the phone no matter who calls. I don't ever know the numbers half the time. Jen can't stand it. If there's anything I'll get yelled at someday, it might be that. But I'll always answer the phone. If anybody here ever calls me, I'm going to do what I can to answer. Mostly because of OCD. Secondly, because I do care for the people here. You know, I don't want people to feel like I'm not all about feelings. But I don't want people to feel like they're stuck, they're drowning. If I'm the only person somebody calls and I don't answer, what happens? That's, and that's just me. Because I, I know there's very few people that I will call when something's wrong. And depending on what's wrong depends on who I call. If somebody doesn't answer I know where my mind goes so I'm here for you <laughs> uh, James chapter 5 I am aware just so nobody freaks out I am aware that this is more tribulational than anything but in the spiritual sense I think it can apply for us <clears throat> And in verse number 7. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he receive the earthly and latter rain. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Take, my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord, for an example of suffering affliction and of patience. Behold, we count them happy. I'm just going to pause, actually, because we suffer affliction. In, in the name of the Lord, for an example of suffering affliction and of patience. Patience does go into all this. And if you can be patient while people are trying to cause you to stumble it will be helpful verse 11 behold we count them happy which endure ye have heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy but above all things my brethren swear not neither by heaven neither by the earth neither by any other oath but let your yea be yea and your nay be nay lest ye fall into condemnation is any among you afflicted let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. We'll get the 1040 for you later, Brother Dave. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed, sin, and, well, and if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Again, you ain't got to share your whole life, all your failures, all your faults. But if we can't, again, lean on each other in this assembly, in this congregation, to, to say, I need help, why? Why? Most of us here have known each other 15, 20 years, which is weird because I'm not that old. <laughs> but until I knew my parents were getting old, when I started having to take, taking care of your parents, it's weird. It's like, I'm not that old. Oh, parents are on their way out. Oh, okay. I'm old. But We've known each other that long and we all get along. 
which is different from most places. Again, I, I should be able to call up, not, maybe not everybody, but I should be able to call a few people up in this group of people and say, here's where I'm struggling. And know that it's not gonna go around. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll definitely make sure that's a thing because every time somebody hears something, oh, did you hear about this person? Sure. You hear, that's why people don't tell each other things. That's why people don't ask for help because something's gonna go around. I'm confident that if I go to anybody, whoever I do end up going to here, it's gonna stay there. I personally am not worried about that in this group of people. And that does go for Ken and Essiana as well. They're not here. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I was praying ahead of time, I'm gonna be over, but I'll get chastised for that later. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> only two more. Um, no, I lost it. Ecclesiastes 4. Oh, I was praying for this message that whoever needed to be here would be here. So small a crowd is what we got. We don't have everybody that normally shows up, and that's okay. Obviously, that's the way it was supposed to be. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 7. Then I returned, and I saw a vanity under the sun. There is one alone, and there is not a second. Yea, he hath, not, he hath neither child nor brother. Yet is there no end of all his labor. Neither in his... Neither is his eye satisfied with riches, neither shall, neither saith he, for whom do I labor and bereave my soul of good? This is also vanity, yea, it is a sore travail. Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to, li to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail against him, who shall withstand him? And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Obviously, you have each other to, lift, to pick each other up. If you're walking by and somebody's drowning in four inches of water, pick them up. <laughs> it's, yeah, you could stand there and just say, what are you doing? Turn over, stand up. They might not hear you. They're a little preoccupied in their mind so grab them by the collar and the belt pick them up stand them up and say let's go but verse 13 better is a poor and wise child than an old foolish king who will no more be admonished um, I've learned over the years the faster you can admit you don't know something or need help the faster you can learn it and correct it <clears throat> be a poor and wise child mm -hmm. be ready to learn ready to correct just admit you're wrong it's easier than lying about it mm -hmm. it really is I learned that the hard way a lot over the years um, 1 Timothy 6 you know it's You get caught in that, in that realm of nonsense when you just can't admit you don't know something. Six, one through 12. <clears throat> uh, for sake of times, so we'll just jump into six, verse six. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and, per and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, 
they have erred from the faith, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things, and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good faith, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Um, a lot of people here, I'm sure, know KISS, K-I-S-S, -S, not the band. Um, keep it simple, stupid. Emphasis on the stupid for me. Um, stand up. Start walking. Follow after the things of Christ. Follow after the Word. Be in the Word. And you'll be able to get through it. That's over time and underpaid. All right. Amen. Uh, Brother Green will pray for us, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you that we could be here this morning. Lord, that we're all with you in the spirit. But we're here because of the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> Thank you. We have a King Bank and James Bible. We can open and read and absorb. Lord, to permeate Amen. our hearts and Sunday school message and the message to God. We love you, Lord, and give you thanks for everything. Amen. Well, see you in a few.